hello craft team welcome back to my channel it is fine crafties in this video we'll be making a rose gillet turban detailed with crinoline let's get crafting <laughs> To get started, we need some items for our project. Like always, all items used will be in the description box below. We need our Gilletoban base. If you want to see how this was made, we have a tutorial up on our channel. Check out the link above to see how the Gilletoban base was made. We need our zigzag scissors. normal scissors office pins fishing line for this project i made this of fishing line you can use your matching thread in place of fishing line then we need our needle We need our crinoline because the gilet fabric I'm working with is a soft one so we need something to give it weight or strength or to make it stiff. So for the measurements, I made use of 86 inches length gilet fabric. The width is 8 inches. That is 86 inches in length, 8 inches in width. For the crinoline, is the big size crinoline for the length i made this of 84 inches length so our gilly fabric is 86 inches in length while our crinoline is 84 inches in length and the width is the big size crinoline so to get started i made it um 84 inches not exact the same with the gilly fabric measurements of the length so you don't start the crinoline the same length with your gilly fabric so it won't be showing out of your rules when you're done making it so we'll be folding this in two and to start we don't fold it exactly the same length you slant it a bit the way I'm doing it now, you give it you give it a little slant so it will not be lapping on itself, like staying flat on itself. When you slant it and fold, you're giving it a kind of um a puffy feel, so it's not lying flat on itself. So I'll give it a slant. And for the crinoline inside, I didn't put it on the edge that is not directly on the edge of your fold of your fabric so it's not popping outside too and secondly i'll be making use of my zigzag scissors to trim along the length and the width aspect so the your um, fabric does not fray so you can actually cut out um when you're cutting it out use your zigzag scissors to cut out so you know to do it when after uh, you pin your stuff, but I didn't cut mine. So I'll be cutting it after I make my pins So I'll just pin down now. That is what I'm doing. I'll just be pinning down till I exhaust the length of the fabric I just pin down in place So I folded my crinoline in two while slanting the beginning then I'm folding my fabric over it and pin down in place. So if you'll be using a soft gilly fabric like mine, so you'll be needing a crinoline. But if your gilly fabric is already stiff and you don't need you don't need a crinoline, so you don't have to put the crinoline inside uh, your fold, but the process is the same. If you want to use it to make your rose, it's just the same process. You just leave out your crinoline. But if you're using a soft uh, gilly fabric like I did, then you can make use of your crinoline to give it and uh, to give your rose structure. So I'll just continue. I'll go ahead to pin 
down my crinoline and my fabric now my crinoline is not directly on the edge as you can see there is not directly on the edge of my fabric so it will give me allowance to use my uh, zigzag scissors to cut through so i'm done pinning down my my gilly fabric and my queen uh, crinoline so i'll just use my zigzag scissors to make that um, fancy look and also to stop it from fraying two in one benefits <laughs> so that's why i'm using my zigzag scissors so i'll just go ahead and cut it out the width and the length wise to give it that that fancy look i need to stop your fabric from fraying also so i'll go ahead with the length so the reason why i didn't put my crinoline on the edge so i can cut use my scissors without cutting my crinoline so that is why i didn't put my crinoline on the edge so i'm done cutting through the length now it's time for us to make a running stitch on garters a step to making our gale rose so i'll just make my running stitch this is where my crinoline started and i'll take it as a reference to where i will start my running stitch so it will run along my crinoline so my running stitch the my stitches will run along my crinoline so I'm, as i'm making my running stitch i'm taking off my pin whenever i get to the point where i pinned it down i'll take out my pin and continue my running stitch so the the reference of my crinoline is uh, the point where I started my running stitch on my gilly fabric from the beginning. So my running stitch will run along my crinoline. So if you've not subscribed to our channel, please kindly do subscribe to our channel. If it's fine crafties, join the craft team for more Edward tutorials, fashion accessory DIYs, millinery tips. I am Ibiwari. If you're new here, you're highly welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. So let's continue making our running stitch. We just go along through the length of our gilly fabric and do the same thing. So I like using a um, fishing line because for me, it's stronger and it holds, it doesn't snap easily and it holds, it's stronger. Just let me leave it at that for me. So we'll do this all through the length of our gilly fabric. Remember, our, we are running the, uh, the running stitch through our crinoline so you just have to take your time and do this stuff So I'm almost done with my running stitch. I'm almost done making the running stitch. It's so just for us to finish, gather it up. The purpose is to form gathers with our running stitch. So I'm done. I'm done making the running stitch and this is what it is. This is what was formed for now. So we'll just set this aside and work on our crinoline. Then we'll come back together and fit them all on our turban base. So for the crinoline, the measurement I used is 25 inches length. 25 inches length. Remember, it's still the big size crinoline. So for the crinoline, you have the parts where you have thread running through and the other part does not have thread. So you just pull out the thread the way I did, pull it out on one side and start forming gathers. 
that when you've done towards the middle you move to the other side and form do repeat the same thing pull out the thread pull it together and form your gathers quick and easy so you just pull and form pull gently so it won't snap on you so once you're done you bring the both threads together and tie you bring the both threads together and tie so if you're not gentle enough and you snap your thread it your all your effort has gone to waste you just have to use another quinoline and i know you don't want to waste your materials so you just have to be gentle and make your gathers So you just tie, what I'm doing now is just to tie the both ends of the thread together, bring the threads together from both ends, then tie it. Just to secure it in place, we still have to use our needle and thread to stitch it down, but this initial time just to secure it in place so it won't loosen out. So I'm done tying it, I'll just go ahead and cut off the excess thread. Go ahead, cut off the SS thread, then I'll use my needle and thread to stitch. So I'm still using my fishing line. I told you I'll be using fishing line for this project. So if you're using your needle and thread, that is also fine. So you just go ahead and stitch needle and thread, needle and fishing line. So if you get to try out this um, tutorial, kindly let us share your pictures on Instagram, on Facebook at Ibis Fine Crafties. We'd like to share your pictures and see what you made. And if you've not subscribed to our channel, click the subscribe button now and join the craft team so you don't miss out on anything coming on the channel so i trust you want to see everything coming on this channel so just click that subscribe button now like this video if you've learned something from it share with others so they, they too will see what you've seen and learn from it also so after stitching down i'll just bring the two ends of uh the two free ends of the quinoline and make a running stitch and pull towards the center so i'm making my running stitch from the center outward of the two from the two ends but once it gets to the tip and you pull your thread it pulls it towards the center what this does is to take the fraying ends in towards the center so you don't see any fraying ends outside and when you place your bows on it there will be no fraying ends popping out anywhere so i'm done making that's what we did for that quinoline just quick and simple but you get to see how it all comes together so now we are making it's time to form our rows it's time to form our rows so let's get into it so first of all, you make your initial uh, coil or initial petal, whichever one. So just first of all, make a twist of your gathers, twist it, and we'll be tacking along as we are forming our rows so it stays in place. For this part, if you're using a stiff... Um, gilly fabric it might be difficult when you get to the third and or uh, second third layer to pull your needle through so you can tack the latest layer but for this is not that difficult so i can still pass my needle through so we'll be forming our rows while we are tacking form our rows and tack So you coil gently, coil and move along your gathers. Just coil and move along your gathers 
and you tack as you go so it will um it will keep it in place so all your hard work will not just go like that mm -mm. you don't want stress so you tack along as you go i'm liking it already if you're liking it too just leave a comment in the comment section we are not done but i can see the beauty coming out and we gonna slay with it so continue and you tack just this process you just have to be a little patient and form your rows the way you want play with it twist it the way you want just visualize what you want your rows to be then you twist it see it if it comes out well if it doesn't you go again twist it play with it and see what comes out of it so your rose might not two roses might not come out the same because what you imagine might not be the way i imagine it so just let your imaginations go play with it twist it the way you want then tack it down and enjoy your rose so just continue in this um in like manner be twisting and be tacking be twisting and be tacking like i said for if you're using a stiff gilly at this point that you're already going to the third layer it will be difficult for you to pull it through to the first layer so all you have to do is to tack the second to the third layer you tack the second to the third layer but if you can still pull it through to the first layer then go ahead so i'm just still checking how i want it to be like i said let your imaginations go play with it twist it the way you want check it out if you like what you see stitch it down so that is basically what i'm doing now checking my rose playing with it see how it comes out then i'll just stitch it down when i like what i see so i'm almost done i'm almost done forming the rose i'm almost done forming the rose isn't this beautiful if it is let me know in the comment section and i think my goals came out big so if you want it smaller you adjust your measurements if you want your rose bigger adjust your measurements increase the length if you want it smaller reduce the length go play with it how you want but i like the size of my rose and this rose now i'm just thinking of so many things that you can do with this rose i'm just thinking of like imagine imagine this as a brooch on your evening gown or something i'm just imagining things right now but i know it will come out beautiful it will come out beautiful so you can just think other things and make use of your rules for other things so i love what i'm seeing so i'm done i'll just go ahead and uh, tie off not my thread and i'm done with my rules what will be left is to attach all the bits and pieces together on a turban then uh rose gillet soban detailed with quinoline will be ready so i just not my thread and we'll move to the next phase so if you've watched up to this point and you've not joined the crafting i don't know what you're waiting for but you can click the subscribe button now and join the crafting because i'm on a journey to 500 subscribers and i hope that i get 
to that before the end of july so you can make it happen by clicking that subscribe button and join the craft team share this video if you like it give it a thumbs up share this video for others too to see and benefit from this wow this rose is beautiful it's beautiful so it's time to put our pieces together our uh, quinoline already is tagged and uh, uh, stitched down to the turban and now how you place your turban your rose is totally up to you if you want it to be placed towards the side or towards the, um, the center but even if you put it directly on the center when you put it on you can tilt it to the side as you wish as you wish so i'll go ahead and tack it down to my ngele turban my turban base so for tacking what i did i just tacked the went through the turban base tacked it to the last layer of the rose through the turban base through the crinoline then the last layer of the rose then i did that all through the the rose the gele rose i did that all through to hold it in place to my turban base and that was it as simple as that look how beautiful it is look how beautiful it is you are sure to slay with this it will be a showstopper so try this and share your outcome with us on ibis fine crafties facebook instagram would we'll like to know how it came out for you tell me it's not stunning leave a comment for us in the comment section and let's know your thoughts on this video tutorial on this tutorial on this uh rose gilly turban with detailed with queen Elaine. let's know there is no limit to what we can create like i always say be creative that's all you need to do just be creative let your imaginations come to life till we meet in our next video take care of you stay safe and bye bye y'all